What's going on YouTube? Kurt S7 here for my Premier League predictions of the season 2016-17 season. Yes, I know the season has already started, I know, calm down, but the transfer window is shut closed. So now we've only played three games in. This is when I do my predictions for the Premier League season. I did my predictions, I think now, this is a while ago, about three, four years ago, when uh, Ozil decided to join Arsenal on transfer deadline day. And that particular season, I predicted Arsenal, before the season started, to finish fifth. I was so confident that on transfer deadline day, Arsene Wenger got one over me, signed Mersen Ozil, and Arsenal finished fourth. It burnt me till this day, so this is why I give my predictions uh, after the transfer window is closed. And mind you, it's only three games in. We're not halfway through the season, are we? <laughs> but just one quick message before we start the predictions is to let you guys know I'm doing a FIFA 17 Q&A this week. So get your comments down below or follow me on Twitter at Curtis7. Make sure you ask me any question that's FIFA 17 related. Right, this is going to be interesting. We're going to start from 20th spot and work our way up to the champion. So uh, it's going to be interesting. So uh, in 20th spot, the relegation zone. I don't like doing the relegation zone. It's very sad, but we're going to start somewhere. And in 20th spot... Unfortunately, I've got Burnley. I think Burnley, they were in the Championship last season. They're in the Premier League this season. I think they're just going to go straight back down. I know they've got Andre Gray, and he's on fire, and he's scoring lots of goals. I just don't think he's the only reason to keep you up in the Premier League. So, I think Burnley is going to finish 20th. Now, we're 19th. I've got a bit of a controversial one. I've got Swansea City. Yes, the Swans have been in the Premier League for a few years now, but they have sold a few good players and have got, in my opinion, average replacements. Losing Williams at the back is massive. He is colossal, in my opinion, and not really replacing him. They did get Leroy Fair and Lodiente, but they are both average. They both had good starts to the season, but I don't think they're enough to keep you guys in the Premier League. And in 18th spot, we have Watford. Again, Watford, they've got great players like Igalo and uh, Troy Deeney, but again, I don't think you can rely just on those two solely to keep you up in the Premier League. Last year, they did. They kept them up in the Premier League, but I think this year, the Premier League clubs, are, they know what Watford's about. They know their game plan, and I think they're going to figure out Watford and Unfortunately, I think Watford are just going to go down. So in 17th position, just surviving the relegation zone, I've got Sunderland. Yes, David Moyes is Sunderland. They've got a few players uh, in the transfer window that can just help them. But for more importantly, that this, this team, Sunderland, is a Sam Allardyce team. It's been drilled to survive. Uh, and David Moyes is a defensive coach as well. So I think between David Moyes, uh, his philosophy, and the, the philosophy of uh, Sam Allardyce that's already installed in these players can just, and I mean just, keep him above the uh, relegation zone. So yeah, Sunderland at 17. Now in 16 spot, I've got Middlesbrough. Yes, they've bought well in my opinion. They've got Victor Valdez in goal. Uh, they've also got Guzan from Aston Villa in goal. He's a really good keeper. But more importantly than that, they've got Negredo scoring goals. He's hit the form running already. And I think Middlesbrough are going to enjoy their first season in the Premier League back. It's been a few years, but uh, I don't think they'll get relegated. I think they will survive. Now, in 15th spot, I've got a controversial one, Hull City. And I say controversial because... A lot of people are tipping them to finish in the relegation zone to get relegated, but not me. I think uh, Mike Phelan, I'm not too sure if he's got the job on a full-time per, uh, permit yet, but if he does get the gig full-time, I think he can get Hull playing some decent football. I know their squad is very, very thin, but they've got a few decent players uh, on the last couple of days of the transfer window. They've got Will Keane from Man United, a very uh, highly rated youngster, especially me. I really rate uh, Will Keane high, but they also got Mason from Tottenham, who's a half-decent player. So with, with my feeling those players, I think Hull can survive the relegation zone. In 14th spot, we've got Bournemouth. Yes, Eddie Howe's Bournemouth. Now, the biggest uh, news coming from Bournemouth over the uh, transfer window is the acquisition of 
Jack Wilshere on loan for the season. And I think that's going to help Jack, and I think that's going to help Bournemouth very much. Now, they do have another a few youngsters. Bournemouth, they've got Jordan Ibe uh, from Liverpool, and they've got Smith as well from Liverpool on permanent deals. So I think uh, Bournemouth are going to have uh, a decent season by their standards. Now, 13th spot, I've got Crystal Palace. Yes, Crystal Palace weren't looking that great uh, at the start of the season, but by transfer deadline day, getting Loic Remy from Chelsea on loan and getting Christian Benteke on a permanent uh, is going to do wonders for Crystal Palace. I think the acquisition of both Benteke and Remy will have enough goals to easily avoid relegation. But with Padre at the helm, I don't think they can go too far. But I think they're going to have a half decent season by their standards. And in 12th spot, I have Southampton. Yes, it's a little bit lower uh, than they have been the last previous seasons, but they lost their manager in Kermit. That's a massive loss in my opinion. And not just that, their best player, or arguably losing their best player in Sadio Mane. That's going to be a huge uh, loss for Southampton. They did pick up Nathan Redmond, but in my opinion, I think they will finish 12th. Now in 11th spot, I have West Brom. Surprisingly, West Brom, uh, you guys might think, but Tony Pillars, he's been there over a year now. I think his philosophy is kicked on with the squad a little bit more. And the acquisition of uh, NASA Chadley is huge, in my opinion. I rate NASA Chadley. I, I thought it was, I was a bit surprised that Tottenham let him go. But he will create goals and score goals for West Brom. So that's why I got uh, West Brom in 11th. Now, in 10th spot, I've got West Ham. That's probably a little bit lower than what you were thinking. That's just because, I, in my opinion, I think West Ham have bought too many players. Yes, they have bought some quality, and some quality has gone, but uh, I think just Slavon Bilic has just got too much of a job to do to get the players to gel. And plus, they're at a new stadium now, the Olympic Stadium. I think it's just going to be at all just a little bit too much for West Ham. But in my opinion, I think they will really kick on the season after. I just think they're going to struggle just a little bit this season. Now, in ninth position, what other team can we put there rather than Stoke? Seriously, we couldn't. There had to be Stoke City. They have finished ninth now, what, three seasons in a row or something crazy like that. But in all seriousness, I was going to have Stoke finishing a lot lower than what, where I've put them at the minute. But I waited to transfer deadline day to do my prediction. And they have signed Wilfred Boney. In fact, I think he's there online. But whatever the case may be, Wilfred Boney will be playing for Stoke this season and I think that is a massive for Stoke. They've been missing that big power striker up front that can guarantee you goals and I think Stoke is going to have a good season and uh, pick up from their slow form uh, which they've started off but they will finish ninth. Now in 8th position I have got Leicester City. It's a bit of a tricky one where to put Leicester. Yes they are the Premier League champions but the season before that they just narrowly uh, escaped relegation. So uh, where do you put Leicester this season? It's a bit hard. They've bought a few good players. No one spectacular. No one uh, you know, simply amazing. No world-class player in my opinion. But they've got Champions League this season as well. That's not going to help them in the Premier League. It's going to be amazing to watch. But I think that's going to affect their position in the table in the Premier League. So that's why I've got Leicester at 8. Now coming in at 7th, we have got Everton. I think the uh, addition of Ronald Koeman for Everton is going to be massive. Uh, obviously, we've seen Martinez. He was a shambles of a manager, especially towards the end of his tenure at Everton. But not just Ronald Koeman picking up Balassi for Everton is going to be uh, a decent buy as well. But not that. More importantly... Ashley Williams. I, I highly, highly rate Ashley Williams. So, Ronald Koeman, uh, Balassi, and uh, they did lose John Stones, but I don't think uh, John Stones is anywhere close to as good as Ashley Williams. Well, not yet anyways. They, City have bought him for potential, but Ashley Williams is right here, right now, and I think he's going to help Everton finish 7th. Now, here we go. We got the top 6. Now, this is where it starts to get hard. Now, in 6th, position i have gone with tottenham hotspurs yes i have gone with tottenham again a little bit um controversial i should stop saying controversial because this is the premier league it's so unpredictable um you just don't know where anyone's gonna finish but i got tottenham finishing six just because 
I just don't think they're going to deal with Champions League football and the Premier League quite so well. Yes, they were in the Europa League last season, but Champions League football is a lot different in my opinion. They're going to need their best players for the Champions League, where last season they could have got with uh, got away with using their squad players in the Europa League, and I don't think that's going to happen now. So I just think their squad depth isn't that great, so that's why I've got Tottenham uh, finishing 6th. Now, just missing out, and I mean just missing out on the top four. Now, these particular two clubs, I could not make up my mind. It was so hard for me. But in fifth position, just missing out on the top four, I've gone with Liverpool. Uh, again, Liverpool don't have European football. So no Europa League, no Champions League football. And we all remember the last time that happened with Liverpool. They almost won the league with Luis Suarez. So... I think Klopp, with no Premier League, uh, no uh, Champions League or uh, Europa League football, I think it's going to be a massive boost for Liverpool. I think they're still going to be inconsistent, but I think they're going to be more uh, playing well than playing bad than what we've seen last season. And I think they're just going to miss out on top four football, in my opinion. All right, so here we go, the nitty-gritty top four. Now, in fourth spot, I have got the one, the only, fourth Club champions, Arsenal. <laughs> I just can't see Arsenal finishing anywhere else besides fourth spot. I know I'm having a, a laugh right now, but in all seriousness, I can't see Arsenal dropping out the uh, top four, and I can't see Arsenal getting anywhere near uh, the top three. So I think Arsenal... Uh, they, Arsenal's a frustrating one. You know they've got the money. They don't spend their cash. But if they went out and bought a world-class striker, a world-class defender, you know, you can easily see Arsenal challenging for the title. But with the squad they got at the minute, I don't think they will be challenging. So that's why I think Arsenal are going to finish fourth. And coming in third in the Premier League this season, I have got Chelsea. I think Chelsea have done marvellous this summer. They did have a bit of a blip last season, but I think that was just a one-off. They were the champions the season before that, and I think, again, they're going to be working their way back up under Conte. We all know what a great manager he is. Uh, look what he's done for Juventus and Italy. But not just that, but literally the signing of Kante from Leicester is going to be huge. So I think... So those uh, signings, like the ambassador away from uh, the Belgium striker had a decent Euros. I think those signings and Conte is going to put Chelsea back up the table and in third position. Right, now the one you've all been waiting for, the two Manchester clubs. Um, may as well announce the winner coming at first rather than second. I think this is just my opinion. Don't be hating on me. Don't be saying I'm biased. I think, in my opinion, um, the champions this year will be Manchester City. I know, I know, I know, it's controversial. I get that, especially me picking City over United. But just hear me out, hear me out. Just relax. I just think Manchester City, they just got a little bit better squad depth than us at United. I just think... United, if we were to get a serious injury to Paul Pogba or to Zlatan, both of them at the same time, and that's just to say a length of time, most of the season, we're basically less, uh, left with the same squad as we were last year. Albeit, we do have Jose Mourinho this time around. And I think, in my opinion, uh, he does know the Premier League a lot better than Pep Guardiola. But, uh, it, you know, it, it could turn the other way. What if Pep was to get these injuries to Aguero? We all know he's going to get injured at some point during the season. But uh, what if what if the likes of uh, Kevin De Bruyne was to get injured again for City? You know, what if company is out for the rest of the season? You know, it could turn in Manchester United's favour. I think the top two is so, so, so close in my opinion. But I think if everyone's fit and everyone's firing to go, I just... I just think at this point in time, City have just got the smallest of smallest of edges over Manchester United. But hey, that's just my opinion. Please don't hate my opinion. I just... It's the Premier League. It's so unpredictable. We don't know what, which way it's going to turn. I'm saying it's so, so close. 
Could be a massive. City could win by 30 points, you know? United could win by 30 points. Or we could have Hull City win in the Premier League. We just don't know which way it's going to turn. But I love it. And you love it. That's why we love the Premier League. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. It's going to be so much fun coming back to this video at the end of the season to see where all the clubs have finished up and to see how good or most likely how badly I did in these predictions. But uh, before I go, don't forget to uh, ask me that Q&A uh, question. Get your comments down below or add me on Twitter at Curtis7, uh, FIFA17 related. But uh, yeah, get your comments down below. What are your predictions for the uh, Premier League season? Uh, make sure you get the comments down below because I will be checking to see what you write in the comments because it's going to be interesting to see what you guys predict as well when we come back. But until next time, lads, I've been your boy, Curtis7. Take care and peace.